So for IB, we just want to throw a little bit more content in there. So we want to talk about this amplitude and intensity. So a wave, it will carry energy, and the rate that it's going to carry that energy is what we call the power, which we saw in the last unit. So for example, if we have a 60 watt light bulb, what that's really telling us is that it's going to radiate energy in all directions, such that 60 joules of energy is emitted every single second. So we have 60 joules per second. We know a joules per second is just a watt. Now, where that light happens to actually strike the surface is going to dictate this thing called the intensity. And you have a pretty good idea of how intensity works. The closer you are to the emitting object, the more intense it's going to be. The farther away you happen to be, the less intense it's going to be. So the equation that we have for the intensity is going to be this I equals P over A. So I is going to be the intensity in watts per meter square. P is going to be the power and area is going to be in meters squared. Now, a lot of the time what we assume is we assume that the source that's emitting, it's going to emit equally in all directions. So it's going to kind of emit like a sphere. So if I have say this like really nice pink light here, I don't know why it's pink, but what's going to happen is that it's going to start to emit in cir it's going to emit in a spherical direction. So we're going to have a sphere and a sphere. So that light is propagating out in all directions in what we would call a concentric sphere. And we know that the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, so r being that distance from the center of the sphere. So if we make the assumption that the sphere, or sorry, if we make the assumption that this object is radiating out in a concentric sphere, instead of area, we're going to put 4 pi r squared, because this is the surface area of the sphere. So what this allows us to do is this allows to find the intensity at some distance away from this source, assuming it's, uh, assuming it's radiating energy in that sphere. So you'll notice that the intensity is proportional to the dist inverse distance squared. So this is an inverse square law. And we've already seen some inverse square laws. The big one that we've seen in this course so far is the law of universal gravitation. You'll see a lot of inverse square laws in physics. It's not a coincidence. So what we can do now is we can establish there's a relationship between the intensity of a wave and its amplitude. So kind of recalling from the last unit when we looked at potential energy and amplitude, we know there's a relationship because we know that EP max is just half kx squared max. Or we know that instead of x max, we can write amplitude. So we know that the potential energy, or in this case, we'll just say energy. We know energy is proportional to amplitude squared. So this is the first part. We have E is proportional to amplitude squared. Let's work with that a little bit. We also know from the previous unit that power is just the rate of energy change, so the energy per unit time. So from this, we can conclude that the power is directly proportional to the energy, so P is proportional to E. What we want to do is we want to start relating our previous relationships now. So from our relationship between power and intensity, we can conclude that intensity is directly proportional to power. Now, and the reason for that is just because of our equation, you know, I equals P over A. So from that equation, we know that the intensity is proportional to the power. Well, if we know that intensity is proportional to the power, we also know power is proportional to energy. So what that allows me to do is that allows me to say that the intensity is proportional to the energy. But if I know that intensity is proportional to energy, I also know, what we just discussed, that the energy is proportional to the amplitude squared. So if the intensity is proportional to the energy, we can conclude that the intensity of a source is proportional to the amplitude squared. So that is our relationship between intensity and the square of the amplitude. If you do more advanced physics, you'll hash that relationship out a lot more. But for now in IB, all you need to know is that it's a squared relationship. So if you tripled the amplitude, the energy and the intensity is going to increase by a factor of nine. So let's look at some examples for that. So if we have a stone, it's dropped in still water and it creates ripples circular ripples that move away from the point of impact Z. The height of the ripple at point P is 2.8 centimeters and at Q it's 1.5 centimeters. So we'd like to find the ratio of energy carried by the wave at point P to that of point Q. 
So our interest is the ratio of energy of P to the ratio of energy at Q. This is what we'd like to find. Well, what we know is we know that the energy is proportional to the amplitude squared. Now, what we could also say is we could just say that the energy is equal to some, I'll call it some fake constant. I'm going to call it K. We'll call it K A squared. So this is some constant of proportionality. So this constant of proportionality, it's going to be the same for this wave. It's not going to change. So that's a really important point. It's the same for all points. So what this means is this k value is the same at p and at q because it's still the same wave. So what we could say is that EP over EQ, it's this k amplitude at p squared divided by k amplitude at q squared. So the k really doesn't actually factor in. Because it's a constant, it's going to cancel out. So what we could say is that the ratio of energy at p to the energy at q is just the amplitude at p squared divided by the amplitude at q squared. So that ratio, we're told at p, point p, we have 2.8 centimeters. We're going to square that. And then we have 1.5 centimeters at q. So we're going to do 0.8 divided by that, square it. So what we're going to get is we're going to get about 3.5. So what this is telling us is that at P, because we have a greater amplitude, the energy at P is about 3.5 times greater than it is at Q. So that's how we can use that relationship between energy and the square of the amplitude. So last one we want to look at here. So we get the power radiated by the sun. It's 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts. We can get that from something called the Stefan-Boltzmann law. And the distance between the sun and the earth is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. So we'd like to determine the, atten the intensity of the sun's radiation at the upper atmosphere of the earth. So we know that the intensity is just the power divided by the, uh, the area. And again, we're going to assume that this power radiates out in a concentric sphere. So we're going to say this is 4 pi r squared. So for example, here's the sun, here's the earth. So what's happening is that we have that power, the intensity of the light, it's radiating out in all directions in that concentric sphere. So we would like to find the intensity at this point on the surface of the sphere. And we're told that distance from the sun and the earth is this 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. So on the surface of the earth, so we have the power, we have that 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts. And then we have that 4 pi, and then this distance squared. So this is going to give us the intensity on the upper atmosphere of Earth. So let's see what we get here. So we're going to get about 1379 watts per meter squared. Or we could say that the intensity, it's roughly about 1.4 times 10 to the 3 watts per meter squared. We could say 1.4 times 10 to the 3 kilowatts per meter squared. That works. So that's the intensity at the surface of Earth on its upper atmosphere. Sorry, at its upper atmosphere. So on a clear summer day, 70% of this amount arrives at the surface of the Earth. So we'd like to find out how much energy is received in an area of 0.50 meters per squared in one hour. All right, so first of all, only 70% received. So what we're going to do is we're going to say I received is 0.70 times our 1379 watts per meter squared because this is the actual intensity that reaches the surface of the earth. So we're going to say that's about 965.5 watts per meter squared. So this is the intensity. Now we want to find out how much energy is received in one hour. We know that intensity is power divided by area and we also know that power is equal to energy per time. What we can do is we can kind of put these two equations together. So I could say that the intensity that's received is the energy divided by the area multiplied by the time. Or if I rearrange this, the energy that's going to be received is going to be the intensity that's received times the area that this intensity is falling on multiplied by the actual time. 
So let's look at this energy. So we are told we know our intensity is at 965.5 watts per meter squared. We're told it's an area of 0.50 meters squared. And then in one hour, well, we don't want hour, we would like seconds, so we're gonna multiply this by 3,600 seconds. So this is gonna tell us how much energy is imparted on this small surface area in an hour. So if we do the calculations, we are going to find that it is about 1.7 times one, two, three, times 10 to the six joules. So in an hour, so this light that hits the upper atmosphere, it's gonna have, a, an intensity of about 1400 watts per meter squared. 70% of that ad is gonna make its way down to the surface, which we can say is about 966 watts per meter squared. And then to find how much energy is being imparted on that surface area of 0.5 meters squared in an hour, we calculate that energy and we find it's about 1.7 times 10 to the six joules.